So we got ourselves a fun one here today, a uh, 2018 Silverado. The customer thought it had key issues, so they had a locksmith make a key, and uh, guess what, didn't fix it. <laughs> of course not. Um, and if we turn this thing on, key on, you can see the stuff comes up and then it goes back away, and then it will slowly come back on after a few seconds. There we go. And we'll get some messages here, uh, service safety, restraint system, and then, uh, come on, go to the next one. Service trailer brake system. If we push this, we'll go to the next one, tire monitor, and service theft deterrent system. That's one of the reasons they thought it needed a key. And back to service safety restraint system. Um, but yeah, this thing doesn't need a key because it literally doesn't talk to hardly anything. So yeah, how can you program a key or get key data exchanged between modules if the modules are not talking, specifically like the BCM, ECM, um, yeah. So safe to say, they didn't really probably need a key. So on the top Dom Phoenix Smart here, I've got all data pulled up. And I think a good place to start with this is basically just the high speed network bus. I mean, we've got a ton of modules not talking, uh, specifically ECM, BCM, uh, things like that. So I've got the high speed data bus pulled up here. And you can see we've got the uh, ECM here, uh, the body control module here. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of network or a lot of modules on this bus, and we haven't come with none of these. Uh, so this is a very good place for us to start our diagnosis. So first thing I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to unhook the battery. Uh, and we're just going to check our uh, pin 16 and 14 on our DLC for uh, a good 60 ohms and see what we find there. So I went ahead and just undid the negative battery cable. Some of you might ask why. Well, because whenever I'm ohm checking the DLC CAN bus circuit, I like for no power to be on the vehicle because that way I know there's no modules awake. There's nothing weird going on on the bus that's going to throw my own reading off. Um, yeah, and so I've got the fluke just pinned in here, and look at this. We got a good 60 ohms. So what does that really tell us? On a GM, that means we've got a good circuit wiring connection-wise from the DLC to the engine computer and on this vehicle it should be a terminating resistor i think on uh, the back of the vehicle on the frame let's see um yes it's got a terminating resistor on this one so that basically just means our circuit integrity is solid from ecm to terminating resistor on the rear giving us a 60 ohm load uh, 120 in the ecm 120 at the back that however does not tell us that the circuit is not shorted to power or shorted to ground so now what i would do is take my uh, just one of my pins and move it off and onto the ground and see if we get a path to ground and look at that 62 ohms so if I change my lead here to the other can line, we get 2.9. So we have a wire short to ground. So we have a short to ground in the can high wire, I think. I don't know. I, I can't even remember these things. Uh, one of them. One of the can lines is shorted to ground. Uh, so now we just need to basically 
check and see where that short is. And the best way to do that is to uh, split the network in half. So on our di wiring diagram here that I still got pulled up, you can basically see we've got DLC out to junction blocks, transfer case control module, uh, instrument panel, um, TCM down in the transmission, and then the ECM. And then the other way around, we've got serial gateway module, body control module, power steering, electronic brake, uh, chassis control module, chassis control module auxiliary, um, and then a CNG. We don't have CNG, so we've got terminating resistor up there. So, where would you guys start at? Well, I usually try to split the network completely in half. On this thing, I would say half would be body control module or power steering module. Uh, body control module is not too hard to get to, but the EBCM is really easy to get to. It's just under the car here, and that will basically narrow us down to EBCM chassis control module, the auxiliary chassis control module, and then the terminating resistor. So it basically narrows the section down a little bit more uh, if we unplug that. So if we unplug that and this short to ground goes away, we've narrowed it down to that little section. Uh, or we confirmed that it's on this section. So let me crawl under here and uh, we'll unplug that. And I'll let you guys stay right here and watch our meter come on a little dirt in it but okay there we go up to 7k by unplugging the uh, ebcm so now we need to go towards the back of this truck to figure out where the short to ground is. All right, since we're going back towards the chassis control module, I've pulled up a diagram here of the, basically the back of the truck of all the modules. Um, chassis control module can be called a few different things on these trucks. I don't know why, but they just call them a few different things. Um, like on this one, uh, K19 suspension control module for a Z95 or a K38A chassis control module auxiliary for a JL1, uh, then a K111 fuel pump driver control module for a 1500, well we're a 2500 6 liter gas engine. So where is our module? Well we need a K38. Um, not a K38A, but I do know just from experience with these things um, that the chassis control module is integrated with the fuel pump control module. Uh, so, yeah, so it gets very confusing on these. But we've got basically three modules back here at the back of this thing all on the data line that I th that we're looking at come on or not you're not gonna work but I've got the uh, spare tire down out of the way so we can see what we're dealing with under here uh, so we've got module here there's actually one on top of this one uh, this one is I think the trailer brake module uh, and then on top of it is the chassis auxiliary module and then here is the fuel pump control module slash chassis control module so the next in the line of circuit would be this one so if we unplug this one okay let's uh go see what our ohm reading is back down to the 7k so that tells us the 
issue is after the module or internal. So if it's internal, then we can bypass this and so we'll see our 120. Well, actually we'll see 60. We should see 60. No, we shouldn't see anything because we're on the ground. We should say, stay probably close to the 7K. Uh, but if we go back over to our 6 and 14, you can see that we're open circuit. So we could uh, put a jumper harness in there, jump those connections together, or plug it back up and unplug the next module, which I think was the auxiliary chassis control module, which is on top of that thing. So it's kind of not a not a easy one to unplug. Let's see. Yeah, the chassis auxiliary module would be the next one. And like I say, it's on top of that thing, so it's kind of hard to get to. Um so yeah let's just let's just bypass that and see if uh we stay fine or if our short to ground comes back all right so i have these little jumpers made up um i have just a ton of these little uh micro 64 ends that and i just made i think i got three or four sets of these just double ended so i can basically just jump these modules um i've got a diagram pulled up of this connector I know I need pins five and six that I'm gonna jump with my red side and then 17 and 18 I think I'm going to jump with my black side to basically bypass this connector and carry my data circuit on Nick to the next module up there so there you go see how we got that together let's go check our, our own meter okay so we dropped down to 2.7 K so it changed but we're not shorted to ground anymore we still got 2 K of resistance there so let's go check our 60 and make sure we got it back yep we did so that quickly we've kind of determined that our chassis control module is internally short to ground um was it luck that i got there that fast probably not it's mostly experience i uh, see you know a lot of those modules go bad um so let's uh hook our battery back up and see if that restores some of our uh, communication to the vehicle or not and see it, if, since that's fuel pump module it's not going to crank and run but we'll see if we can get it to spin over or anything like that see look uh hooked the battery back up and now our arm reading is doing some funky stuff that's because there's voltage on the can lines right now uh apparently i might have left the key on and everything is turned on uh I need to reconnect this because I had it unplugged here and we'll rescan this car or truck and see if uh, we can get anything. First, let's see if we can crank it. Um, still getting service, let's see, service restraint system. No, nope, still got service theft, so still no crank. So we definitely still got some issues, but let's see if uh, we can get a scan on this truck now. Get the screen recorder going. Oh, we've pulled a VIN this time. Uh, on my other scan, I, I manually entered the VIN, so now we have a VIN number, so we've got COM back to the uh, ECM at least. Let's do a smart scan. Yay, we get some codes of the ECM. Um, we'll let this run and uh, come back when it's finished. All right, I got my 
van hooked back up to this thing with jumper cables to keep the battery charged up. Got our, uh, our second scan done and it's not very, looking very good. We have still no calm with the BCM, um, the uh, SDM, um, let's see what else, power steering control module. What else we got? I'm not sure if this thing has a transfer case module because it's actually a uh, a manual manual transfer case. So not really going to pay too much attention to that. But EBCM, we still can't talk to that. It is plugged back up. So no calm with EBCM, BCM, SDM, power steering control module. Um, I'm really not sure how many of these other modules we have or don't have. Suspension control module, that should be built in with our chassis control module right here that uh, we have unplugged and bypassed. So, yeah. Um, looking like we got ourselves a uh, lightning strike truck. Multiple module failed or bad. Um, Usually, it's a pretty good sign of either battery was jumped off backwards or a lightning strike. Uh, not really a whole lot of other stuff that'll take out a lot of modules at one time. So, we basically already know we got a chassis control module bad, guaranteed. Um, we can check our powers and grounds to the EBCM. That would be easy to do. We can check our powers and grounds to our BCM. That would be pretty easy to do. Uh, the SDM, I think it's under the seat in this one or under the console. That one will be a little harder to get to. But, yeah, let's just start going through these and picking them off. I'm, you can almost bet that if you go through and check all the fuses and all the fuses in the truck are good these are probably bad modules but uh, we'll check them at, at the modules just to confirm so I've got the diagram to the uh, BCM pulled up for uh, basically module powers and grounds and data uh, this is what that module needs to basically communicate with DLC and everything else on the vehicle so we got a bunch of power feeds here, uh, four grounds here, and then we have these two ignition on or wake up circuits that feed out to the car or the truck that uh, have to do with all these networks here. So first, I'm gonna start with this one because if this ain't coming on, these network or these wake ups ain't gonna be turned on, which could keep calm with other modules from happening. So we're just going to verify all these, these power feeds here and um, these grounds here. And I got to look, I think this one or this one, one of these might be ignition on from uh, the key switch, I think. Um, it should know which one is the key. So I'll have to look and see what these are for sure. But I know one of them will be a wake up for the other modules. So let's uh, verify this module, good or bad first, and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, I got the BCM pulled down here to where you guys can kind of see um, our diagram here. I'll uh, take a screenshot of this so y'all can kind of see where we're at, follow along. Um, basically, X1 is here, and each one of these plugs counts one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so on their diagram, we've got on X1, we've got uh, ground on pin one, and then three powers. So it'd be easy to, to start there. And we're going to use just some back probes here and test light and no power. Okay, let's go to the next one, no power. So is it a power issue or a ground issue? Well, if we just unplug 
our DLC, we know we've got a good ground here. So we've got no power. Well, let's start with that. Let's check these powers and uh, see what's going on with them. They're coming from uh, the fuse box. All right, so we got our fuses here. This should be what this is. Uh, panel right. Okay, nope, never mind. It's on the other side. So we need to go over there and check fuses. Uh, we do have some fuses here on panel left. Um, so let's uh, check uh, the other powers on this thing because we've actually got multiple here that don't have power. So like uh, we checked three, uh, two, and four. I think. Did we check all, all of those? And let me check my bulb first. Let me make sure my bulb is good. Yep, my bulb is good. So, no power, no power, no power. Let's check our ground. So we're just gonna go into the power feed of the DLC, check our ground. Yep, so we do have a known good ground to the BCM. So, pulled the fuse out and stuck my test light in there across the fuse and it blew uh, pretty bright. So, went ahead and just unplugged the BCM and I don't know if you can see, it's a little black looking in the top of this and uh, it smells very bad, very burnt. So, uh, let's uh, crack this sucker open and uh, see how bad it is in here because it uh does not smell good at all if i can get it out of this case come on <laughs> whoa <laughs> i think it's safe to say that one is done wow holy smokes I don't think I've ever seen a BCM in my life be that bad. Wow. Well, I think it's safe to say we need a BCM <laughs> and a, uh, a fuel pump control module or chassis control module. So yeah, let me get a BCM and a chassis control module put in this thing. And we'll see if these other modules come alive or not. We may have more issues. All right, I got a BCM put in this thing, brand new, and a brand new uh, chassis control module. Got them programmed. Uh, replaced the fuses in the fuse box. And uh, now we've got a crank start stall. <laughs> Let me show you. So let's turn the key off. All right, we'll crank it. So it starts and runs, and it shuts off, and our theft light stays on. It did say the key programmed just fine. Let me try the other key, this key. This is the one I believe, I don't know which one was original to the car and which one was uh, cut, but this one, it looks newer than this one. But let's see. Uh, what this key does. Same thing. So, it, uh, even though it said it programmed both of these keys, it still says we got a theft issue. So, I guess we will keep going with this thing and uh, see what other modules we have that are not talking and see if we can figure out why uh, now we've got a start, stop, or a start and stall kind of theft issue. Well, as you can see, the body control module is not very happy. Um, it's setting a code for keyless entry transmitters, which we don't have. Um, and then incorrect environmental identifier from the cluster. The cluster is original to the truck, but then it says no environment ID from the uh, airbag module or the HVAC module, or the brake module, and then a system configuration 
but that I know is because I can't set up the SDM key um, and then for some reason this thing is still set, is setting a B101D uh, electronic control unit hardware failure I'm not really sure if I've got a bad brand new BCM or what but I'm not worried about it until I figure out the rest of this and as you can see we got a ton of stuff on LIM bus that is not communicating and like the windows don't work so I'm sure I've got some LIN bus issues possibly this thing's a, a nightmare kind of but if we go back over here we can see the HVAC module does talk it says there's a problem with the rear defogger circuit and then incorrect mobilizer ID received and then no calm with the SDM so I'm almost wondering if maybe the SDM being bad or not talking is kind of breaking the loop of these ID, the environment IDs being calculated through the truck or something. So we also have, a, of course, the ECM loss column with EBCM. So I've got two modules now that I really need to focus on, the SDM and the uh, ABS module or EBCM get those things figured out and uh, then see what happens but looking like we still got a lot of problems with this truck we got the SDM pulled out and got the diagram pulled up here what do you think we're going to have? we're going to have our powers and grounds here? well let's find out let me see if I get you guys here where you can see maybe so the connector here is actually labeled pretty good it's pin 1 through 8 and the diagram says we've got pin 9 here is um, ground so not sure if you guys can see that light bulb or not but we got gr power there and I'm not sticking this in there I'm just barely touching it so not spreading pins uh, and then our diagram says we've got ignition wake up basically here on pin 17 so let's try that one same thing got power there so um, it does say we have a dedicated ground which is pin 19 here so if we go from 17 to 19 we see our bulb lights up so we have all of our powers and grounds to this thing but uh, this module is dead. <clears throat> you, you're probably thinking, well, you didn't check your data lines. Do I really need to? Uh, this is on high-speed data, uh, high-speed CAN, and we know from front to back our wires are good because we had 60 ohms. So we have data going through this module to get to other modules. So is there a reason to check our data lines? No. There, our data is getting to this module because it gets to other modules. So we've got a dead S SDM. Uh, what do you think we're going to find with the uh, EBCM? You're probably thinking, right, it's probably dead. But let's go uh, do our due diligence, check our powers and grounds to that one too. Well, here we are under the truck, EBCM on unplugged I have a diagram here we've got battery power on pins 1 and 25 and then we've got a ground on 38 and let's see these things this is 38 right here so we've got 38 and then pin 1 which one is 1 that one all right, so that power is good. Now 25 is that one. And now all we need is a ignition turn on. Do we got an ignition? Yeah, pin 28. So that's 25, 6, 7, and 8. So 25, 6, 7, and 8. There we go. So Hopefully I got y'all in the frame here to see all that. We've got 
two powers a ground and our ignition wake up at the plug and uh, no calm to it. We got a dead EBCM also. Well, I got it running. We still got a lot of lights. <laughs> oh man, got a SDM for this thing. Brand new, got it programmed. Got an EBCM, brand new, got it programmed. It would actually still start and stall with a theft issue. I can, you see now we don't have a theft light anymore. I do still have a theft code for the uh, HVAC module, and I did have one for the cluster. For some reason, I had to actually go in and reprogram the cluster, and then the identifier was fine with it. Uh, but the HVAC, I cannot reprogram because GM tells me it's already got the current calibrations in it, and it won't let me do it over again. Thanks, GM. Uh, so, going to do some research about that one. See if I can't figure out a way to get around that code, get that one to clear. But as you've seen on the dash, we still got a lot of lights. We've got a battery light, an ABS light, traction light. Um, yeah, and on the uh, top down here, let me get the screen recorder going. ECM setting a generator L terminal circuit fault. The EBCM uh, doesn't like the left rear or right rear wheel speed sensors. And then uh, invalid data from the body control module and it's got loss calm with the trailer brake control module, which on this truck, they call that the chassis control module auxiliary. And if we go on the BCM, we still got keyless transmitter, uh, no identifier from the HVAC, system configuration, fault steel, um, tire monitoring code. Uh, loss come with chassis control module, but I'm pretty sure this is the auxiliary one for the trailer brake. And then limb bus, limb bus, limb bus, limb bus, and limb bus. <laughs> so we still got a lot of problems with this thing. Um, and yeah, power steering is working. So this one might not have a uh, power steering control module. We might actually have just a hydraulic power steering system. Let's see. Let's just look at this thing. Yep, we got hydraulic. So no power steering control module on this one. I'd almost bet that if it had one, it'd be bad. So, that's going to be it on this video. I know it's a lot of like doing the same stuff, ain't it? Uh, check modules for powers and grounds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, confirming bad modules. So, uh, thanks for following along with me. Uh, as you can see, we still got ways to go with it. I'm going to get with the customer and see how much further he wants me to go with it. And... Um, I'm sure he's gonna say go all the way with it. And if he does, and we decide to go that route, let me know in the comments if you want me to continue filming this truck about all these limb bus codes and these other issues that it's got. So just let me know down there in the comments. Thanks for watching everybody and uh, we'll see you guys later.